welcome to Go Ahead Tell Me. My name is Rosie Gigure and today we're closing the celebration of Black History Month 2023, chatting about success and well-being with director, writer, and producer Kamisha Guden. Enjoy. Hello, Kamisha. Thank you so much for being here in Go Ahead Tell Me and for uh, sharing your story with our audience. How are you? Oh, great. Thank you so much for having me. Excited to be here. We do here in the podcast is to talk about success, how we have come to um, achieving success, but also how we take care of our well-being. So tell me a little bit about your story at the beginning. Okay. I am from Goldsboro, North Carolina. That is where I was born and raised. I have two sisters and a half brother. Um, I am a first generation college graduate, and that is where I discovered my love for filmmaking. Um, I always been interested in the um, entertainment and arts. I was in theater camp as a kid. I was in choirs and glee club, and I always performed. But um, when I went to college and discovered that I can make films and um, create them, I immediately fell in love after taking some production classes. And um, I made my first short film when I was in undergrad. I went to UNC Chapel Hill. Mm -hmm. And I initially started out as a pre-law major, but I was bored to death with the classes and um, was drawn to the media classes. And so that is where it first happened. And, um, and I made my first short film and it was well received on campus. And I started, um, I was like the videographer for the Black Culture Center. Um, and so I filmed all their events and speakers. And, um, and I remember talking to the director of the um, Culture Center and he was like, um, well, you wanna be a filmmaker, you need to go to NYU or go to film school. And that's when I learned you can go to film school. And so I ended up um, applying to graduate school and I decided on Columbia College Chicago and that is where I got my MFA. And it's kind of where my career began. Um, and then I moved out to L.A. once I finished um, graduate school and um, started pursuing the path of being a filmmaker. This is so interesting. And it's so interesting because, I, um, as I always said, uh, we really don't know exactly. I think most people don't know what they uh, want to do in the first uh, years of college. Uh, like me, I I chose economics and then I, <laughs> I changed, right? So it, it is similar, but I know, and this is what I want, you know, young people to know, sometimes it happens and it's important when you discover what you want to do. How can you tell me, going back to this story, thank you for sharing that, Amicia. How can you tell me, because you were doing uh, performing arts when you were uh, younger, like mm -hmm. you said. So how did you, um, again, you took some classes, you were bored when you were studying uh, law, but um, besides knowing that uh, your teacher told you, your professor told you that you should go to film school, there was any click inside of you that told you, um, oh yes, this is what I, I'm passionate about. Um, oh yeah, oh yeah, I, <clears throat> I'm a very spiritual person. Mm. Um, And um, I just remember when I felt like, oh, my God, like, this is what I want to do. And it was just like a, a really strong um, pull towards that direction. And and um, yeah, I, I remember going on a spiritual fast for clarity about whether or not this is what I was supposed to be doing. And I felt like I got my answer and I was like, OK, I'm going to pursue this full force. And the reason why I did that, I went that deep spiritually is because <laughs> I had been told so many negative things about the film industry because we used to have yeah. people come and tell us. And one thing they would say, if there's anything else that you want to do, do it <laughs> because it's mm -hmm. hard um, mm -hmm. and um, it's really tough. And I was like, do I want to go this path and struggle to pursue my passion? Because that's what was told to me. It was all it was going to be a very hard path and it's not for everyone and so I didn't want to go into it um without having that spiritual connection first to God and like really 
you know, get a very strong sense that oh. this is what I was supposed to be doing. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Kamishi. Now I know because you know that I'm going to make questions about how you keep your, uh, maintain your well-being. And oh my God, uh, give me chills to know that you have that connection with Papa Dios, as I call him. Is, uh, you know, <laughs> I love that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so thank you for that. So let's go then. When you co uh, came to LA, you went to uh, Columbia and, and studied your master on, on film. And then you came to LA. What happened when you came, that decision that you say, okay, I'm going to go to Hollywood. Um, mm -hmm. and, and what happened? Um, well, I will tell you, before I went to film school, I actually interned at Lifetime Television. Um, oh. And so I was a development intern because my school had an internship program. And as soon as I graduated, I drove across country to Los Angeles just to, to, to get my oh. feet wet. I always thought I would end up in New York. <laughs> oh. um, but, but coming to LA for that internship made me realize, okay, LA is where I need to be um, oh. to start my career in the film industry. And so I kind of got a taste of it before film school. Um, and I'm glad I did because I went to film school in Chicago. Um, and so when I went to film school, um, yeah, it was, it, film school was my opportunity to show myself that I had the talent to be able to um, make films um, because I wasn't confident in myself. I knew mm -hmm. I had the passion for it and I knew that I had a talent, but that talent wasn't developed and I knew it wasn't developed. So And then I didn't know how far it would be developed because, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, you have to it's, it's a tough competitive field. You have to be great to make it um, or you have to be prepared and lucky to make it. I don't I don't necessarily believe you have to be great, to be honest with you. But mm -hmm. I um, film school is my opportunity to build my confidence. And so mm -hmm. um, I made a couple of short films in film school. Um, I had some festival success and I've gotten some award recognition. And, and so when I finished my thesis, which did really well on the film festival circuit, um, I felt like, okay, I have a portfolio. Um, and now I need to go to LA and try to make it. Um, and so I, um, I had some connections. The transition out here was pretty Actually, the transition was easy. It, it got hard later. No. Oh. <laughs> yeah. When I moved out here, things happened. You know, I was I got an internship, you know, and I had a part time job while I had that internship. I was working for a small production company, State Street Pictures, um, who I, I, I was connected with them in here because I PA'd on one of their feature films. And um, and so and then I got my first job at Disney. Um, and then the writer strike happened and the recession happened. And then. I, it, things became hard for me, um, mm -hmm. um, in 2008 and I kind of had a setback for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Um, and so during that time, I just focused on my writing because I wasn't working in the entertainment industry at the time. I actually had to get a, a corporate job. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I worked a corporate job actually in legal, ironically. Oh, oh. <laughs> and so I did that and I wrote my scripts on the side and I took my writing classes to kind of like develop my, my um, skills as a writer um, mm -hmm. and, until, and I did that for three years. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, um, and I, and it was a tough time. <laughs> it was a tough time um, for me creatively and also professionally uh, because I didn't know how I was going to get out of that situation. Mm -hmm. And then I managed to get a job at working for Paramount Pictures Um, still in a corporate capacity, not a creative capacity, but I was able to um, learn um, by working at a major studio. And then I started making films again. And I made a short, a very short PSA about recycling. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I placed in the Paramount Pictures um, short film competitions that they had for employees. And um, that kind of gave me my, my mojo and confidence back. Um, and so I did that. And also I took classes at UCLA because they had free tuition reimbursement while oh. working at Paramount. So I got a, a whole nother certificate in feature screenwriting while working oh. there. And um, and so I wrote a script feature screenplay, Destiny's Road, and um, 
submitted that to film festival competitions and, and screenwriting competitions. And I got into the Sundance Women in Film or Women in Films Sundance Financing Intensive. And mm-hmm. so that just, I, I think that opened up a lot of doors for me um, creatively because after that, I just really started blossoming in my career, um, getting into other programs. And I made a web series, Men of the House. Um, yes. And I want you mm-hmm. to talk to me about, uh, you know, your films, your project. And, and thank you for sharing all of that, sharing that it was hard. It was hard after 2008. And but your decision, Kamishia, and this is what I wanted to, to tell you, because I think uh, for me, consistency, and that's what you've done, and faith, your faith, and I always mention this, and obviously hard work. Right, mm-hmm. but you have to be consistent, and you have done that, and you have balanced the corporate world uh, with the creative world, and that's really hard. <laughs> really oh, yeah. hard. So, <laughs> congratulations for that. And I wanted just to summarize what why you are um, someone to be uh, to admire and, and follow your step. Really, um, thank you for that. Now, yes, tell me about all those films. How you started, and I know you started your short film. You're um, in. Uh, uh, film school, I think, and then you you did all of this and and took advantage of, of being in Paramount and, and doing your corporate work. Talk to me, tell us about your films um, and how did did they uh, your ideas? How did you brought those ideas? To okay, life? Um, so I would start with I, I guess um, Man of the House was me wanting to challenge myself with comedy. Because up to this point, most of my projects have been family dramas. And I think I'm naturally, I can naturally write comedy within a drama. It, it's not anything that I try to do. It just naturally happens. Mm. <laughs> But in terms of focusing strictly on comedy, um, that is not my area of strength. <laughs> so I mm-hmm. wanted to test the waters with Man of the House. And also I wanted to showcase um a positive image of black women and also um, young children because my, the cast, the main cast consisted of like young boys. Um, They were all under eight years old and it was just about them like, you know, flexing their dominance in terms of like um, the, the, my main character for Man of the House was about an eight year old um, young kid who, um, You know, he, he his mom was a single mom and he, you know, stepped up to be the man of the house after his parents um, separated. So um, it was just meant to just show kind of like a Dennis the Menace type, um, mm-hmm. a modern day Dennis the Menace type featuring a, um, a, a, a an African-American young kid who's smart, intelligent and witty. Um, mm-hmm. So it was a fun project to do. It was um, I didn't have any resources for that. I fin- financed it myself. And um, mm-hmm. I think my first episode I shot for less than $200. And, mm-hmm. um, and so I, I think, yeah, most of my friends volunteered on the film. Everybody worked for free. I found a cinematographer who had everything, lights and camera, who shot it for me. One of my film school um, classmates was the casting director. I was able to use the alumni office for my, um, casting um for my casting sessions and then one of the kids one of the parents to um um one of my actors um was able to get me a location Mm -hmm. um for my second and third episode actually and I still we still collaborate today like she actually was one of the producers on my latest short film Mm -hmm. um so I just was blessed to have these wonderful people come and help me out on this project. And we got it made. It was cute. And we got it um, distributed. You can see that on Quali TV. Oh. Um, it's an African-American streaming um, site. Um, and you can also see it on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel and, and you can access that through my webpage as well if you want to check that out. But it's really cute. Um, and it was made of very limited resources. Um, and I'm I'm super proud of it. Yeah, and I think in, in you know in your web page too, and, and you're gonna uh, tell the website. But remember, Kamisha um, uh, Wooten, and that's your website. Mm-hmm. Uh, that com. Yep. 
right? Uh, mm -hmm. So, but, but we're going to spell it so everybody can go and look for you in YouTube and see all your uh, film. But like you say, can you repeat the, the channel where this, uh, the main of the house is uh, airing? Uh, it's on my YouTube channel. I think it's, to be honest with you, it's, the channel is so old that I don't know. It's okay. not manofthehouse.com. It may, there may be a Man of the House YouTube channel because um, mm -hmm. I shot that, that web, it's like from 2014, I believe. Okay. So okay. it's pretty old. Um, but you can go to KamishiaWooten.com and I have all the links there. So you can access that film, my older short films from film school, um, my um, short film, Destiny's yeah. Road, which was the proof of concept for the feature film that I made. That's up there. And you can see the trailer for my upcoming short film, Choices. Yes, and you see all of that. I've seen that the website, and you see all of that. And in the web page, remember Camisha Wooden dot com, mm -hmm. um, and in all the social media, also they can connect uh, with social media. Um, I have a question. You have done. I, I mean, you're a complete. No, there's no incomplete filmmakers, but <laughs> you are. Yeah, I was gonna say a complete filmmaker, but you are a director, a writer, and a producer. Yes. And, you know, there are some people that focus mostly on one of the three. And, and again, I've done the three too, but I'm passionate about one of them. Do you mm -hmm. have any, like, choice? You At first, I didn't think I had a choice. At first, I felt like it was writing because writing you can do without permission. Um, mm -hmm. And you, you don't have to have money to write. But I will tell you, last year, directing opened up for me pretty, you know, widely. Um mm -hmm. Directing has always been my number one and writing. I felt like I had to do it. It was necessary because I needed materials to direct material to direct. So I wrote um, and I try to improve, improve in the area. Um, but directing is my first love. And I would wow. say writing is second producing. To be honest with you, it's not, I don't like it that much, but I'm naturally good at it. Uh -huh. And so <laughs> I do produce um, <laughs> because, you know, it's, it's, it's like natural for me. Like I can, yeah. I'm a, I'm a natural producer. Um, so, yeah. Oh my God. So I'm, I'm going to just say and share that because I'm a media producer and I, I'm reading and, and I also direct, I have directed uh, documentaries and things like that, but I am passionate about being a producer and I know that I'm weird in that sense because <laughs> production, it's, um, it's like you said, it's a, and, and I can see why you said you're a natural for that. Obviously, you're a natural for that. You work in the corporate world and at the same time, you use your creative side. And so again, and you put things together and you are like, like I'm going to repeat this, you're your first generation graduate and, and you know, also, I, I think you mentioned, you you told me before that you are the only one in your family working in the entertainment industry? Yes. Oh, my God. Yeah. So how has that been with your family? That's another thing. And also being the first gen uh, graduating from college. Um, can you share that experience? I would say first, confusing, mm. <laughs> especially mm. to my father. My father... Um, very proud that I went to college, but he could not understand the concept of film school. It took him, especially when I initially started school on the, on the path of being a lawyer. And then I was telling them I wanted to be a filmmaker. And it took, it took my father a long time to understand the concept of that um, until I started sending films home. And he mm -hmm. was like, okay. And then, you know, when they got better, he, he was very proud and would show his friends like, um, I'm, I'm from a very small town. So, you know, we, you know, it's very small. I remember him calling me from the insurance office because he goes into the insurance office and he's friends with the insurance brokers for like the people that do the insurance for everything from life insurance to homeowners insurance. Like my father mm -hmm. dealt with the same people. And I just remember him calling me <laughs> from the insurance mm -hmm. office, say, Hey, what's your website so I can show, you know, um, I'm trying to think, <laughs> show so-and-so your, 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 pro your film. And I and, and I gave it to him because he was in the insurance office showing oh them my like my project. So oh. that was the moment I felt like, okay, dad finally got it. But yeah, <laughs> his thing was, why can't you just get out and get, get, you know get a great job? You have a degree. And my father thought that um, because I had a, a degree that I would automatically get hired for a, a, 
a job that would pay mm -hmm. me well. And that just was not the case, especially yeah. when I graduated. Yeah. And, and especially, um, commission, you have, uh, you are, uh, having great jobs in the corporate work again, oh, yeah. in, in the creative <laughs> work, but, but, uh, but it's good that you mentioned and for all, uh, people listening to this because the media and entertainment industry is like that. It's really, uh, people don't understand sometimes, but it's hard, um, Like you said at the beginning, like people were telling you, this is hard. It's going to be hard. And uh, I'm, I'm repeating this because I've said it in this podcast. Uh, even my mom at this day <laughs> doesn't <laughs> understand what a producer does. So uh, it's like that. Um, we think so that, that's what I remember when you shared your, your dad's experience. But now then we can go to. How do you balance that corporate? You're working in Netflix now and yes. you're doing your creative work as an independent filmmaker. How do you balance those uh, works, those two type of jobs? Um, it's, it's not easy and it's not a tradition. I just want to point out it's not a traditional path. And, um, and I would say when I came out to L.A. Um, back in 08, it was very hard for, for people of color to get into those entry-level assistant jobs. And so normally that is the path people take when they're interested in like, you know, development or writing and directing, like getting on a, a studio project as a PA and working yourself up. I Those opportunities didn't necessarily come to me um, easily. I think now it's better. I think there there's way more programs to get people of color into those entry-level jobs, but those were not available when I was coming up. Um, in the industry. So the only avenue that I could get into the entertainment industry in was through corporate. And I will tell you, I, I do have a production background and I got most of my production experience while I was in Chicago as a PA. And then I did some second AD work. So when I got into the studio system, I had worked as a legal assistant for Sizzler, the restaurant corporation, um, mm -hmm. during that re the recession. And so mm -hmm. I used that legal background plus my production background and was able to get into the studio system in the production legal, which mm -hmm. is underneath the business and legal affairs department. Mm -hmm. So I already mentioned that I was not interested in legal stuff, but I, I am interested in production. So I, I think what happened was um, the production aspect of my role made the legal part interesting and engaging <laughs> for yeah. me. And so I was able to make that work as a quote unquote day job, which is hard. And it comes with a lot of discipline. Um, so mornings I would write and, um, you know, do my work and weekends and vacations. I would make my films and, you know, make my, my short films and stuff. And so, That is how it worked. And then I also, you know, I got invited to a lot of screenings because I, um, the area of the business I work in is delivery. Mm -hmm. So I oversee delivery of films. Um, it's always been films. Now it's animation because I kind of switched around a little bit. So um, especially when I was at Paramount, I, I went to all the screenings of the films that we acquired. And so that was always interesting. Um, mm -hmm. And I worked directly with producers and sales agents. So I was able to like get an educational aspect of the business, um, an area that a lot of artists don't have exposure to. And so mm -hmm. I think that is how I made that work. And also being transparent with my employers, like letting them know, hey, I'm a filmmaker too. Um, you know, if my creative work becomes a conflict of interest, I know it would be my time to leave. Um, and I remember like Netflix is a very... Um, very high performance environment. So you do need to be a high performer. But when I interviewed for the job, I was like, hey, the, the, my manager knew I was a writer, director, producer. And, I, and he was like, hey, so are you still pursuing your career? I said, yes. And he was like, um, you know, are you going to be able to do both? And I said, if you will allow me, I said, and I asked him, I said, are you okay if I come in at 10, 1030 opposed to nine o'clock? Because I can get my creative stuff done before I come into work and that way I can be focused. And so, mm. um, and he was okay with that. And so, um, that is pretty much how I made it work. And I will tell you that, um, I, I did 
spend a lot of time at these companies. Like I was at Paramount for almost six years. I've been at Netflix for almost five. So I do have a really great working reputation there that allows me to take time off for projects Mm -hmm. um, and pursue my creative endeavors because they know I'm a great worker and do my job. So I've been able to make it work. Yeah. And and as you and I know, and many people obviously that believe in, in the superior force and Papa Dios and the in God, uh, you are where you should be at the right time and, and you know, mm-hmm. right place and doing what uh you choose. And that's that's the most important thing for me. Um again, you're an example, you're a great example of filmmaker. Uh we're celebrating um all the time for me, but Black History Month, we're closing this month, uh, you know, with you, uh, with this interview, because you are such a great example of what we really want to show here in Go Ahead, Tell Me. Um, it's someone who really worked hard. Again, I'm going to mention the being, pers- uh, you know, consistent. And, you know, I understand as a woman and people of color, you also, in, in as, as, as I have, gone through a lot of um, uh, different or hard things in, mm-hmm. in, not in the industry, we, because we work in this industry, but in different places and, and you are where you are. So how do you, now we know how you balance the corporate job with your uh, creative career. Um, how do you take care of your well being, which is key for me? Um, thank you. Cause I do, I'm, I'm not going to say that I don't have periods where I go through depression and then I struggle with anxiety, but I do have a therapist. Um, and I, I believe I'm a strong believer in therapy. Um, and I think therapy has helped me throughout my career. And I will say when the stakes are raised, like I've done a couple of programs, um, last year, like fellowships, um, that were really hard to get. And, um, and you're, and, and, and so the bigger the projects, the more <laughs> mental pressure you get. Um, yeah. and so therapy, faith, and also I had a career coach last year that was extremely helpful getting me through one of the most, I think one of the biggest projects that I've done so far in my career. Um, mm-hmm. and I found that to be very helpful. Um, and so I'm a, I'm a believer in support and also faith too. I think faith definitely is my foundation for everything, but also um, I rely on resources, um, mental health professional resources, and also career professional people who work in that area where they help people develop in their career. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because I know that is exactly what, this is the world that we're living in now. And I understand, obviously, you know, life is a, a, a circle, but we through the pandemic, we've learned a lot of things and, and we should have learned uh, exactly how to take care of our health. Uh, but one of the things or the the two, the two three things that you really use for your well-being, the therapist, which again, a lot of people are doing that and I know and I understand it's so necessary uh, for our emotional and mental health. The career coach is, is I know, um, I, I remember 10, no, not 10, maybe 20 years ago, 50 years ago, when I heard about this coaching. Uh, but it's so important now for people to understand that there are people focusing on, like, for example, your career coach, on being a coach specifically, and they know, and they study, and they put things together, because Mm -hmm. now, as I said, uh, there's a lot of information, obviously, through the internet, but there are people who put things together and and help people, uh, like your uh, career coach or or the therapist, and and thank you, thank you for that, and, and for, you know, mentioning, obviously, the faith, because, again, we for me, we, we work hard and we can do so many things and we can uh, try to achieve a lot of things and money and, and a lot of things. But there are some things that are not under our control. And those are the things that Papa Dios is always under control. So he has under his control. Um, you, I I don't know. I don't remember. But I think we mentioned the, the short film that you uh, were doing with women in film mm-hmm. and in Google because you had this fellowship. You were one of the chosen in for this, um, and I don't know if you want to talk about this this exactly uh, film that you did with women in film in Google. Yes, yes. Um, so, women in film had a short slab. Um, 
and Google sponsored. It was supported by Google. So they provided us with resources to make them. And so my short film that I that was made and selected for the program is entitled Choices. And it is about three very different friends find renewed connection as they await pregnancy res- results, pre- pregnancy test results at their Los Angeles high school. Um, mm-hmm. And so I shot this last year and actually I shot it right before the Supreme Court. Um, oh, wow. Ruled, the abortion? Yep. Yeah, the oh, abortion wow. discussion. And, um, <laughs> and so it was there and we found out our second day of shooting. So actually, I think we found out the um, the leaked. I think it was the leaked um, the, cl- oh, the, the opinion. Leak, yeah, the leaked yeah. opinion came out, and it was during the second day of filming. And I have like most women on my crew. I, I would say the crew was like ninety percent women, and mm. I could just feel the energy. Everybody was like, "Okay, the purpose of the project like mm. elevated." Yeah, um, and so it's something that I didn't necessarily plan. It was something on my heart and spirit to do. And, um, mm-hmm. and I'm glad I did it. And it just felt like it was a, a, a film of purpose <laughs> oh, um, my God. during that season. So I'm excited for it to come out yeah. and for the world choices, to see it. Choices. I, I just want to uh, ask more about choices. I know that we won't see choices now because you're going to send it to the festival, right? Festival circle. Uh, but, oh my God, I just hear what, what it's about and, and it's, so wonderful in, in a game, Papa Dios, how you do that at that time. So I'm so glad. Tell me, but tell me again, uh, there are three protagonists because you say. It's yeah, three, three protagonists. And um, and I chose three for very reasons because it's, it's, it, it's a film about reproductive freedom. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to show three perspectives um, of the film because I felt like. You know, we can agree to disagree, but all choices should be respected. And so at the end of the day, that yeah. is what I want wanted the message to be, um, regardless of what choice people make. And I feel like, um, you know, teenagers and teenagers of color are often left out of that conversation when it comes to reproductive freedom and choices. So I wanted to make something from the, the, pers- the um, from the perspective of um, the youth because there are films about reproductive freedoms and that are portrayed positively in a comedic way, but we don't see those films with brown people. Um, There may be one, I I know Plan B came out maybe like a year or two ago and I was so, so happy about that one, but there's no Junos with people of color. There's no, um, Mm -hmm. There's a, sh- a movie on um, HBO um, that is about um, a, a teenager that that is a comedy about having a plan. Oh God, I forgot what it, what it was called. And, and mm. the person who directed that film was my mentor, mm. um, and it was such a great pro- and I was so excited. But i i wanted I wanted to have a film that reflected people that look like me. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that. And, and, and especially because I really think like you in, in that sense, I, I will always say, and I know this is controversial, but I will always say I am pro-choice and pro-life mm-hmm. because I am choice. You know, you have your right. I have my rights and I just want everyone to respect other people's rights. I, right? I agree. I, I'm, I'm the same way. Like I, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the same way. And that's why I made it. Cause I'm, I'm, pro-choice and whoever I'm pro-choice. And so in, in regardless in pro-life as well too, I would say I'm, I'm a, whatever choice works best for you, I, yeah. I can support it. Um, yeah. But I feel like everyone needs to have that freedom to make whatever choice that they feel that is best for them. Um, exactly. And then the, in the movie that I um, was trying to remember is called Unpregnant and it's on HBO. And that was, oh. A movie that I absolutely love. Um, and um, so, and I saw it and I was like, okay, I, I want a movie like this, you know, for yeah. people of color, people that look like me. I wish we had a film that would be more sympathetic to um, teenagers who may get in the situation of being pregnant opposed to condemning them. Yeah, of course. And, and, and yes, there, there's some stigma also and, and prejudice also for this thing for people of coloring. Uh, but I, 
thank you. I, I, I hope that I can see choices also as a feature or, or any, any of, of your features. I know you have your features and, and I am so proud. I'm just so proud and thankful because you being in this podcast, I just want before you prepare to give advice, which is what I ask at the end for, for our audience, uh, people will, are going to listen to all your achievements and how you take care of your well-being, which is so important, and all the things that you are creating, Kamishia. I am so happy that you are a create so successful creative person and also working in the cor successful uh, uh, working in a corporate uh, world in Netflix and you work in Paramount and that things can be done. You are showing that things can be done. And you also, the most important thing, you also take care of your health. Uh, um, I'm so glad you have your career coach, your therapy, you have your career coach and your therapy. So what are the advices that you will give to the audience? Um, one thing I would say, never give up. Um, I know that's easier said than done, <laughs> but um, utilize the resources you have. Um, and also, don't be discouraged if a door doesn't open. And just like I just said, you do what you can do. Like even if you can only study or watch films and analyze them at this moment in your career, do it. And also don't get stuck on one way of doing things because I definitely did, did not have a traditional path. I, it's still not traditional. <laughs> I don't know many people who've had the path that I've had. So just ignore that path you know, that one way of getting to where you want to go. Um, and then another thing that um, people don't, especially with people of color, um, take care of your finances, because I think that is one area that can take you out. So um, just be financially responsible, um, save as much as you can. Um, and also just be strategic about, you know, how you use your money. And so that is um, a big advice that I have for people of color. If you don't have you don't come for money or if you don't have, um, you know, access to money and you're relying on yourself because I relied on myself for a really long time. Like um, Choices was the first project where I got money from other people to make. Um, and I still use some personal money with that. So, um, you know, it's just like really pay attention to the finances. And it's, it's probably one of the reasons why I chose the path that I chose because um, I knew I needed resources to um, build my portfolio. Yeah. Oh, Kamishia, I I will see you before, but I also will say that I will see you at the Oscars. Please oh, oh my going. goodness. I received that. Thank you. <laughs> Please keep going. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for listening to look for kamishiaguten.com and connect with her because you'll see her as an Academy Award winner pretty soon. My name is Rosy Egugure. Until next time. Y me despido diciéndote que recuerdes que estas recomendaciones para desarrollar tu liderazgo son tanto para tu trabajo como para tu vida personal. Eres un ser humano y tu trabajo no es tu vida completa. Por esto, tu liderazgo es en general. Esto es Éxito y Bienestar, un podcast de Dale Cuéntame. Te agradezco muchísimo si compartes este episodio con alguien a quien le pudiera servir. Estas son las maravillas del podcast. Se pueden escuchar en cualquier momento y haciendo otra actividad. Mi nombre es Rosy Ligure. Hasta la próxima.